Hey everyone, welcome back to another Vapor Honey Technologies and Vapor Blast Manufacturing video. Today we're going to be covering how to correctly set up your blasting gun with its air jet and nozzle size. We're also going to go over some of the air lines in your shop and exactly how all that needs to be set up. That way you get the absolute best results. Let's get into it. All right guys, I am beside our compressor here and this is honestly where all of your setup is going to start. We always recommend that you have at least a five horsepower compressor with an 80 gallon tank. If you can get a seven and a half, that would be phenomenal. Our standard machines use 25 to 30 CFM. So again, that five horsepower compressor is a necessity, but if you can get seven and a half horsepower compressor, that would be phenomenal, just so that it doesn't have to run constantly as you're blasting. Now again, this compressor here is running our entire showroom. This is an Eaton Polar Air Compressor. We recommend them. This thing's worked phenomenal for us. We're not affiliated with them at all, but they do have some very affordable options that you guys can look into when it comes to actually specking out your shop. Now, if you do not have a compressor that meets our requirements of the 25 to 30 CFM, that's where the air jets come in, which we'll talk about here in just a second. One thing I do wanna hit on while we're standing here with the compressor, as you can see, this runs into very large pipe. This is then ran across the top of the showroom and it's brought down to three quarter lines, which are then brought down to half inch lines to actually go to the machine. One thing a lot of people don't understand is that even if your compressor is meeting the correct requirements, if you are running too small of an airline to the machine, then it's not going to be getting the air that it actually needs to perform. We actually had to go on a service call not too long ago to someone's shop who had a cor the correct compressor, but they weren't getting the results that they were needing out of their machine, and it's because they were running a half inch line for 40 feet to the machine. There is a drop off point to where if your hose is too small, then the machine again is not gonna be getting the correct CFM amount. I can't remember the specifics off the top of my head. I can find a chart that we can put on screen right here. Um, I think we also have a blog listed about how to size your airlines in your shop. But again, if you're running a half inch airline, I would keep it below 15 to 20 feet for sure. If you're running three quarter, it could run a little longer. Anything above 50 feet, I would definitely be stepping up into an actual pipe. That way, again, um, you're not choking down the air that's flowing through your system. Now, one more thing I do wanna mention about air compressors is that over time, they do degrade. It's just like anything, you know, your car will lose horsepower because of losses in compression. Same thing happens with an air compressor. So over time, even if your compressor is rated at 50 CFM at 90 PSI, it may only be putting out 40 after 20 years. You may wanna get a CFM gauge just to make sure that the CFM that it's putting out is what it's, it's stated on the nameplate. That way you are certain that everything in your system is working properly. Now you guys may have seen this in the background and before we hop back inside, I do wanna mention what this is. This is just an extra storage tank for air. All this does is help alleviate some of the immediate draw that happens whenever you start using your machine. This does allow your compressor to not have to build up as often, so it will lower the wear and tear on it. And if you do have the availability to put one of these in your shop, we highly recommend it. Another thing that we do recommend if you have the capacity for it, especially if you're gonna be using a dry sandblasting machine, is an air dryer. Our compressor being outside, sometimes we do have water in the lines. Now we do drain it periodically to try and prevent that. And with wet blasting, it's not that big of a problem, but especially if you're gonna be doing any sort of dry blasting, a dryer is almost a necessity. All right, so now I wanna talk a little bit about the actual blasting gun. As you guys can see, there's a barb sticking out of the rear. This is where your air line is gonna be attached to the blasting gun. Only inside here, inside the mixing chamber though, is where the actual air jet is. But again, that sticks on the inside of the blasting gun and allows air to come in and mix with the slurry. Now, if you have the correct size compressor and you can operate the 25 to 30 CFM air jet, we absolutely recommend you doing so. That will provide the most amount of force. Therefore, it gives you the most amount of work to be done on the part, and you can effectively blast much faster than you can with these smaller air jets. Now, again, the reason we have these is we know that not everyone 
can afford or wants to get a larger compressor, but they still want a vapor blast. So we have the 15 CFM air jet. It's fairly comparable to, in my opinion, to the larger air jet, but again, it lowers the requirement of the, the compressor. And then we also have the five CFM air jet. Now we'll put up some B-roll on the screen right here that shows you guys the difference. The only thing that changes is the very end or the tip of the air jet. That's just what restricts the flow of air as it's mix coming into the mixing chamber. Now, a good way that you guys can understand exactly what air jet you need to purchase is take the horsepower rating of your compressor and multiply it by four. That tells you your CFM capability. Now it can be four to five, but I'm just saying four to be on the safe side. But again, that tells you what air jet you need to be getting to put inside your blasting gun. The next thing I wanna talk about is the nozzle that goes in the end of the blasting gun. So behind this white cap inside of the blasting gun, again, this just unscrews. All this white cap is is a holder for your blasting tip. It slips down inside of there. Now we do use a glue to hold those in from factory just so that as you're blasting, they don't slip out. So if you do ever have to replace one, you may have to purchase a white cap as well if yours does not come out. But on the inside, this is the actual blasting nozzle. Of course, slurry comes in on the beveled side and then exits out the blasting gun on the smaller side. This is the standard 10 millimeter nozzle. We offer them in eight, 10, and 12 size increments. 10, of course, is the standard, and that's what we recommend if you have a standard air jet. If you go smaller on your air jet, we recommend that you go down to an eight millimeter nozzle. That way it matches the, uh, the slurry flow with the airflow that's coming into the blasting gun. If you do need a larger nozzle, and instances where you would need a larger nozzle are if you're using something like a crushed glass, which is a very large abrasive and can get clogged in the, the smaller 10 millimeter, we de definitely recommend you getting one. And if you are using a larger nozzle, it is best to use the standard air jet because again, it will provide the most amount of flow and can keep up with the slurry flow that's coming through that larger nozzle. All right guys, just to recap, the most important part of setting up your blasting gun is actually your air compressor because that determines what air jet you're gonna be using. And then from figuring out what air jet you should use, that also helps you determine what nozzle you should be picking. Again, if you can use the standard air jet, that's absolutely what we recommend. It will give you the fastest working time. Um, but if you do have to bump down, it's not going to be detrimental to your blasting process. Uh, again, we do recommend moving down in nozzle size. And if you are using a larger abrasive or plan to use a larger abrasive, we recommend going up. And then again, also having the standard air jet to supply enough air to that larger nozzle. If you guys have any questions, please talk with our sales staff whenever you are purchasing or if you already purchased a machine. They are very knowledgeable when it comes to setting up these machines in any sort of configuration. They can tell you exactly what air jet to purchase if you are confused about that. And they can also help make recommendations for where to put your machine in your shop to be closer to your air compressor and things like that. If you guys have any other questions, please leave it in the comments below. I like doing this more tech series to help you guys figure out exactly how to set up your machine. We've got a lot of good videos coming out about abrasive and how they affect the surface of a metal after blasting. So make sure you guys go check that out. Again, if you have any other questions, please leave it in the comments below and let me know what you guys think of this video. Um, if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. We put out videos just like this every single day to help you guys get the finish that you deserve. Again, any other questions, leave it in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching and I hope you have a great day. Peace.